Over almost 10 years of one-on-one -on -one coaching, there is one comment that I receive on a fairly regular basis from mostly the men who come to me. And that comment or that concern or that question goes something like this. My girlfriend or perhaps my wife used to be promiscuous in her past. What does this mean? Should I be concerned? Is this actually a problem? I've been putting off recording and releasing this video for a while because these are troubled waters that we're about to enter. There's a good chance that someone could take this out of context and whatever, but as always, I feel like I owe it to you guys to be completely honest with you about where I stand and what I think. So in today's video, I'm gonna offer a few thoughts for any men who are troubled by the fact that their girlfriend or wife used to be promiscuous. My name is Zachary Stockhill from RetroactiveJealousy.com, and since 2013, I've been helping men and women from all over the world overcome retroactive jealousy, overcome obsessive jealousy, and save their relationships. And this month, I'm really happy to be celebrating the release of my newest project. It's an all new masterclass called The Path to Peace. This masterclass is designed in large part for men who fit the description of what I mentioned in the intro. This masterclass was designed for men who have concerns and any questions about their partner's values, their partner's past values, trying to risk manage their relationship. Basically, if you are a man or a woman who has any concerns about your partner's past, what it could mean, you're not sure if you're struggling with irrational retroactive jealousy, or maybe your partner's past is actually a problem. Maybe there are actually red flags in your partner's past. I created this new masterclass for you. It's called The Path to Peace. You can find all the details about The Path to Peace in the description of this video. Okay, so your girlfriend or wife was promiscuous in her past. I'm gonna preface this video. You know, there's some throat clearing, frankly, that I need to get out of the way. I need to provide a little context before I go into what I think about this question. Number one, it may surprise some people watching to realize that I have heard similar concerns, not just from men, but from many women as well. Now, to be fair, I've heard this concern largely from men, concerned about their girlfriend or wife's past. However, I have heard from many women who are concerned that perhaps their husband or boyfriend was once highly promiscuous in his past. So some people may want to look at this video and say, oh, you know, how sexist is that? And, you know, how offensive this is and all the rest. And frankly, as I always say, retroactive jealousy can impact just about anyone, regardless of your age or your gender or your sexual orientation and all the rest. In other words, this is not a problem, this is not a concern that is only prevalent among straight guys. I mean, anyone can struggle with retroactive jealousy, and frankly, just about anyone can struggle with the fact that maybe their partner was promiscuous in their past. That said, I'm gonna speak mainly to men in this video because that's the majority of the people who come to me with this question. When it comes to your girlfriend or your wife's promiscuity in her past, as always, or as, as per usual, I think the extreme voices on both sides of this issue are wrong. In other words, on the one hand, you have the totally crazy, you know, PC crowd who says, any man with any concern about any woman's past is a sexist, you know, terrible person who just deserves to be alone for the rest of his life. How dare you question anyone's choices? You should go to hell. You probably get my drift. You've probably seen those people floating around the internet. These are the same people that attack and chastise any retroactive jealousy sufferer for having any of these feelings. I encountered these people a lot back when I was struggling with retroactive jealousy around 10 or more years ago. These people exist and they're pretty judgmental, frankly, and they're not really open-minded when it comes to the fact that I have these questions or concerns about my girlfriend's past. I don't know what I'm feeling. I don't know what I'm going through and I'm looking for answers. So in the extreme end of that spectrum, again, you'll have people who are attacking you and chastising you and saying that any person who has a problem with anyone's past is completely in the wrong. On the other hand, you have the kind of more, shall we call it the red pill, manosphere, uh, men's rights activist crowd who say that basically any woman with any past is a red flag and you need to go find a virgin. And you know, if she was promiscuous for a month in her past, that immediately disqualifies her from kind of wife material. So there's very extreme voices on both sides of this issue. And as usual, in the year 2022, in these weird times that we live in, as usual, I think the extreme voices on both sides are wrong. In other words, I think it's ridiculous to say that a woman could have been with 8,000 men and you know, there's nothing wrong, there's nothing concerning, there's nothing troubling about that. And at the same time, I think it's ridiculous to say that, oh, a woman who's been with eight men is immediately disqualified from, you know, wife material um, consideration. I think the extremes are wrong. I'll also say that in light of my last comment, I mean, the modern sexual marketplace is really confusing and we're still trying to figure things out. The sexual revolution of the 1960s was really not that long ago. This is kind of like our parents and grandparents' generation 
really not that long ago. We're still trying to come to terms with that. We're still trying to come to terms with the miraculous advances in technology and all the dating apps and all the swiping. And we're trying to figure a lot of this stuff out and it's messy. We are a deeply complicated species. Human sexuality is deeply complicated. So beware of black and white opinions when it comes to anyone's past choices. That said, if you are concerned that your girlfriend or wife was promiscuous in their past, one thing that I have learned, especially as I've gotten older, is that many people, and I would say many women in particular, go through distinct phases in their dating lives. In other words, it's really not so unusual for a woman to have a period where she was dating more frequently and she didn't really want a boyfriend. She wanted to kind of suss out her options and really see what she truly wanted and needed in a partner. By the way, of course, men do the same thing. Uh, I'm guilty of that, definitely, guilty. I've definitely had some experience with that in my own past where I didn't want a girlfriend. I wanted to date casually, I wanted to have some fun, I wanted to date around because I was really trying to figure myself out. It was less about, you know, this voracious sexual appetite. It was more just about trying to figure myself out as a man. Many men and many women go through the same thing. That said, phases are phases. There's generally a beginning point and an end point. Of course, phases can repeat throughout one's life, but at the same time, you can also look at a phase as a distinct period when you wanted a certain thing, you got a certain thing, you got bored with that thing, and you wanted to move on. Another example, I guess I'm in a phase right now, in my mid-30s, where that doesn't really seem appealing to me anymore. It's kind of been there, done that. You know, I've been on the apps, I've had some fun, I've had uh, some good times, I've done that, I've kind of got it out of my system, and it gets a little boring and hollow after a while. It's really not that satisfying. And what becomes much more appealing, especially as I've gotten into my 30s, is the stability of a long-term relationship, going deep with one person rather than shallow with many people. And many of you watching this video, I'm sure, have followed a similar trajectory in your dating lives. But of course, not everyone goes through that phase where they want to be a little more adventurous and, you know, date multiple people. Of course, many people don't feel that need, don't feel that hunger, don't feel that yearning at any point in their dating lives. Nothing wrong with that either. Some people have those answers or they fit a certain personality type where they don't feel that need at any point in their dating lives. I don't think there's anything wrong with that either. Which is to say, dating and sexuality is more or less choose your own adventure. What works for you may not have worked for your partner in the past. What works for me may not work for you. And when we're looking to the choices of other people, we shouldn't be trying to project our own viewpoints and project our own motives and project our own personality onto other people because people are so different. So I don't think you should necessarily consider it a deal breaker if, for example, you never went through a phase where you wanted to date multiple people, but your partner did. That said, you can ask yourself, was this more or less a phase? Or was this a marked pattern throughout this person's entire life? So if you're concerned about entering a long-term relationship or a marriage with someone, because maybe they've been having multiple casual partners for 10, 20 years, something like that, that makes a little more sense to me. I understand that hesitation because the person has less practice frankly, at being monogamous, at being in a long-term relationship. And in addition, someone's patterns in their life will tell you a lot about their priorities. So maybe their priority hasn't been a long-term relationship for very long. And in that case, if someone is just getting out of that period of their life where they were dating multiple people and being very frequent with their, their dating habits, it might be worth giving it a little more time to make sure that they really know what they want, they're comfortable with monogamy, they're comfortable with a long-term relationship, to give them a little more time before making any kind of a serious commitment. If you met your partner, you know, however many months or years ago, and they were still dating multiple people in that period in their life, I would also say just because maybe you were 100% sold, so to speak, on your partner when you first met her, doesn't necessarily mean that she was 100% sold on you. And there's nothing necessarily wrong with that. Some people open up a lot more slowly when it comes to dating and wanting to commit to someone wanting to be exclusive. Some people fall in love kind of at a snail's pace. They've got trust issues maybe, or it really takes them some time to build up that, that intimacy. They need more time to kind of really suss out their options and really make sure they're making the right choice, often because they fear being hurt. But that's a different video. The point is it takes people time sometimes to really commit to someone. And maybe that was true for your partner, and I don't think that's necessarily a deal breaker. As I've said in other videos, when it comes to your girlfriend or wife's number, in other words, when it comes to the number of people they've slept with, of course, a lot of guys struggle with this. By the way, many women struggle with the same thing. What I always tell these guys is impulse control is way more important, I think, than someone's number. In other words, if someone's been with 20 people, but at the same time, they were 100% conscious of what they were doing, 
they weren't just kind of making decisions based on impulse and based on impulsivity and like things just happened to me, I couldn't control myself. If they're not using phrases like that, that to me is more important than their specific number. In other words, impulse control, the ability to stay calm, grounded, centered, and make rational decisions at least most of the time to deny some of your perhaps weaker base impulses, that's very important in a long-term relationship because we're all going to have moments of temptation over the course of a long-term relationship or marriage. Impulse control is very important. And if it seems like your partner lacks impulse control, eventually that will show up in the present. So you don't even necessarily have to worry that much about the past because if you give this person enough time to show you who she is, eventually she will. If she lacks impulse control, if she lacks the ability to stay loyal, if she lacks emotional control, if she lacks these things, eventually that will show up in the current relationship. You just need to pay attention, keep your eyes open. And once more, I wanna emphasize this point because it's so important. Give her time to show you who she really is before you make a serious commitment. Nothing wrong with that whatsoever. In conclusion, I wanna make it clear that of course, a woman can do whatever she wants in her dating life, in her sexual life. Of course, a man can do whatever he wants in his dating life, in his sexual life, as long as it doesn't hurt other people. At the same time, you can make whatever choice you want about your dating life and your future. And if your partner has a number that fundamentally you believe is a serious deal breaker for you, of course, I'm not gonna judge you for making the decision to walk away, as long as you're kind to your partner as you do it. But needless to say, I have so much to say on this topic, on this conversation, and I've been saying it pretty much daily for about nine years now on one-on-one -on -one coaching clients with men and women from around the world. Many retroactive jealousy sufferers struggle with questions around their partner's past choices, their partner's number, their partner's morals, their partner's compatibility, and many of them have come to me over the years for one-on-one -on -one coaching. And I've boiled all of these conversations and lessons and research down into an all-new masterclass I call The Path to Peace. Once more, The Path to Peace is my brand new masterclass for retroactive jealousy sufferers who have questions about their partner's morals, who have questions about their compatibility with their partner, who are wondering on some level, is their retroactive jealousy rational or irrational? In other words, are there serious red flags and deal breakers in my partner's past or maybe in their present that I should pay attention to here? If that sounds like you, if you're having trouble with these questions around your girlfriend's past, your wife's past, or anything else, please click link in the description for all the details about my newest project, my new masterclass, The Path to Peace. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching this video today. If you got anything out of this video, please take a minute to let me know by clicking the like button below. I'll also ask you to please leave a comment beneath this video telling me your thoughts, good, bad, or ugly. I would appreciate hearing from you. And while you're at it, please be sure you are subscribed to my channel as well to be notified of new videos moving forward. Thanks again for watching and I'll talk to you soon.